Assalamu alaikum. Uh, our today's topic is gluten sensitive enteropathy, which is called celiac disease as well. And uh, my name is Muhammad Abbas, and I'm assistant professor in pediatric department of the Seed Medical College. So, celiac disease uh, is an immune mediated disorder elicited by the ingestion of gluten in genetically susceptible persons and uh, characterized by chronic inflammation of the small intestine. Celiac disease is considered an autoimmune condition because of the presence of anti-tissue transglutaminase antibodies and the association with other autoimmune diseases of thyroid, liver, diabetes and adrenal. Celiac disease is uh, triggered by ingestion of wheat gluten and related prolamines from rye and barley. In most studies, oats prove to be safe. However, a uh, few celiac patients have oats prolamine reactive uh, mucosal T cells that can cause mucosal inflammation. A genetic predisposition is uh, suggested by the family aggregation and the concordance in monozygotic twins, which approaches 100%. Celiac disease is a T cell mediated chronic inflammatory disorder with an autoimmune component. The most evident expression of autoimmunity is the presence of serum antibodies to tissue transglutaminase. However, the mechanisms leading to autoimmunity are largely unknown. The finding of IgA deposits on extracellular Tg2 in the liver, lymph nodes and muscles indicates that Tg2 is accessible to the gut-derived autoantibodies. Several extraintestinal clinical manifestations of celiac disease, for example, liver, heart, nervous system are possibly related to the presence of autoantibodies. Coming to the clinical presentation and associated disorders. Clinical features of celiac disease vary considerably. So, um, intestinal symptoms are common in children whose disease is diagnosed within the first two years of life. Failure to thrive, chronic diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal distension, muscle wasting, anorexia, and irritability are present in most cases. So, these are the typical features which are usually described in the celiac disease patient. But occasionally there is constipation, rectal prolapse, or intersusception. As the age of presentation of the disease shifts to later in childhood and with the more liberal use of serological screening tests, extra intestinal manifestations and associated disorders without any accompanying digestive symptoms have increasingly become recognized affecting almost all organs. So, this is the diagrammatic presentation of uh, celiac disease patient. So, marked abdominal distension, marked buttock uh, wasting, and short stature. Almost every system is involved in celiac disease. For example, in gastrointestinal system, uh, due to the atrophy of the small bowel mucosa in malabsorption, there will be diarrhea, there would be distended abdomen, and uh, vomiting, anorexia, weight loss failure to thrive and after stomatitis. Uh, hematologically, there would be iron malabsorption, so there would be anemia. And uh, skeletal-wise, there would be calcium, vitamin D malabsorption, there would be rickets, osteoporosis, enamel hypoplasia of the teeth. And there will be malnutrition, so the muscles would be thin, so atrophied. And if there is other vitamins like thiamine, vitamin B12 deficiency, there will be peripheral neuropathy, epilepsy, and irritability. Due to the calcium vitamin D malabsorption and malnutrition, the child will not go, grow properly and uh, the child may have short stature. And uh, skin manifestations, dermatological manifestations like dermatitis herpetiformis, alopecia areta, erythema endosum can be the Presenting feature of uh, celiac disease to a dermatologist and they can refer uh, retrospectively to the pediatrician for making the diagnosis of celiac disease. Idiopathic pulmonary hemosiderosis is found in respiratory system. So, what are the risk groups for celiac disease? So, first degree relatives of the patient, 
dermatitis repetitive formis patients unexplained iron deficiency anemia autoimmune thyroiditis type 1 diabetes with screen for uh, celiac disease type 1 diabetic patient and like dental enamel hypoplasia autoimmune liver disease short stature delayed puberty down williams and turner syndromes and uh, selective iga deficiency addison's disease long list the most common in extra intestinal manifestation of celiac disease so far we have discussed the uh, intestinal manifestation detail but the most common extra intestinal manifestation of celiac disease is iron deficiency anemia which is usually unresponsive to iron therapy and secondly osteoporosis may be present in contrast to the situation in adults it can be reversed by a gluten free diet with restoration of normal peak bone then cytometric values other extra intestinal manifestations include short stature endocrinopathy arthritis and arthralgia epilepsy with bilateral occipital calcifications peripheral neuropathy cardiomyopathy chronic lung disease isolated hypertrans amenorrhea dental enamel hypoplasia after stomatitis stomatitis and alopecia so these are sometimes silent and potential secondary next we we'll see in the next slide so symptomatic as we already discussed frank malabsorption symptoms chronic diarrhea failure to thrive weight loss extra intestinal manifestation i have already told anemia fatigue and the uh, increased liver enzymes neurological disorders short stature dental enamel defects arthralgia after stomatitis so celiac disease is a spectrum so we what we see in opds actually is a tip of iceberg uh, there are many silent cases no apparent symptoms in spite of histological evidence of velocitropy and they come to uh, the uh, you know clinic by the screening method like high risk group we screen them identify after serological and then histological investigation the latent cases subjects who have normal histology but at some other time before or after have shown a gluten dependent enteropathy potential cases subjects with positive celiac disease serology but without evidence of altered jejunal histology it might or might not be symptomatic so as we already discussed these things so patients with celiac disease show increased long term mortality the risk rising with late diagnosis and or poor dietary compliance non hodgkin lymphoma nhl is the main cause of death adult patients can develop complications such as uh, refractory celiac disease ulcerative jejunal ileitis or enteropathy associated t cell lymphoma So diagnosis besides clinical manifestations, there are serological tests that have crucial role in diagnosis of celiac disease, like the sensitivity of IgA anti-tissue transcriptaminase uh, antibodies is 61 to 100% mean, 87%. Specificity is 86 to 100% mean, 60 95%. So they are more specific than sensitive. Some 10% of patients whose disease is diagnosed earlier than two years of age show absence of IgA. and to show transcriptaminase antibodies for them the measurement of serum anti glycan antibodies is generally advised so a problem with serology is represented by the association of celiac disease with iga deficiency serum iga should always be checked and in case of iga deficiency anti glycan antibodies anti endomycin antibodies or uh, anti tissue transcriptaminase igg antibodies should be shot negative serology should not preclude a biopsy examination when the clinical suspicion is strong so it means that if your clinical suspicion is high even if the serology is negative you should go for histological diagnosis of celiac disease the ultimate diagnosis of uh, celiac disease lies on the demonstration of specific though not pathognomic histopathological abnormalities in the small bowel mucosa according to espagan current criteria the two requirements mandatory for the diagnosis of celiac disease are the finding of filocytrophy with hyperplasia of the crypts and abnormal surface epithelium while the patient is eating adequate amounts of gluten and a full clinical remission after withdrawal of gluten from the diet normal histology this is the filocytrophy in celiac disease so you can see the villi and the villi are 
flattened or atrophied. Marsh stages are logical stages 0, 1, 2, 3A, 3B, and 3C is extreme, in which there is total villus atrophy. The finding of circulating IgA celiac disease associated antibodies at the time of diagnosis and their disappearance on a gluten free diet adds weight to the diagnosis. So, other causes of flat mucosa, like the differential diagnosis of histological um, uh, manifestation, is like in autoimmune enteropathy, for example. In tropical supru, in gidiasis, there will be similar kind of flat mucosa histologically. Treatment, the only treatment for celiac disease is lifelong strict adherence to a gluten-free diet. What does it mean? This requires a wheat, barley and rye-free diet. No wheat or wheat products, no barley or barley product, no rye or rye products. Despite evidence that oats are safe for most patients with celiac disease, there is a concern regarding the possibility of contamination of oats with gluten during harvesting, milling and shipping. So if you allow the patient for oats, there is a chance of mixing of oats with the wheat, wheat barley, rye because they usually process in the same mills. So we usually avoid oats as well. Nevertheless, it seems wise to add oats to the gluten-free diet only when the later is well established so that possible adverse reactions can be readily identified. So next is it is important that an experienced dietitian with specific expertise in celiac disease counseling educates the family and child about dietary restriction. It is very important to educate the family as a whole and the child because children are usually very much reluctant to the restrictions in the diet. So compliance with the gluten free diet can be difficult especially in adolescents. It is recommended that children with celiac disease be monitored with periodic visits for assessment of symptoms like growth, physical examination and adherence to the gluten free diet. Periodic measurements of tissue transglutaminase antibody levels to document reduction in antibody teeters can be helpful as indirect evidence of adherence to a gluten-free diet, although they are inaccurate in detecting slight, slight dietary transgressions. Thank you very much and if you have any, any question you can ask in the comment section on the YouTube, or you can uh, ask on the Facebook or you can contact me on my mobile number or WhatsApp directly. Thank you very much.